my dear students, today we would be taking up a very important topic and the topic is the development of the nervous system. As you are well aware that a lot many questions are expected from this topic in your MBBS as well as NEET PG examinations. I would be going about this topic sequentially and I would be discussing here with the objectives of the students coming to know about the development of various parts of the nervous system as well as specifically the neural crest cells and the abnormalities in the development of the nervous system vis-a-vis -vis neural crest abnormal migration. So firstly to start with today the topic of the day as you can see on the board the topic of the day is the development of the nervous system. As far as the nervous system is concerned, you have to remember that the nervous system develops during the third week of intrauterine life. And you must be well aware of the fact that there are those three germ layers, the ectoderm towards the outside, the mesoderm in the middle, and endoderm towards the inside. The whole process of formation of these three germ layers is called as gastrulation and these three germ layers are also given the name as embryonic disc or the germinal disc. Now as far as the nervous system is concerned you have to remember essentially that the nervous system is developed from neuroectoderm. Now going towards the board you can have a look at the board and you can see that here we have got something which we call as the neural plate and the neural plate subsequently over here the way I'm moving my cursor over here and then it gets converted into neural groove and the neural groove further on goes development and there is the development of the neural crust and the neural tube the neural crust we will be taking up at the latter part of our lecture and here is the neural tube the neural tube is an elongated structure and it develops along the craniocaudal axis of the embryo and the cranial part of the neural tube leads to development of the brain and the caudal part leads to development of the spinal cord now this neural tube undergoes further development and over here you can have a look at the figure. The look at the figure wherein you have what we call as the forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. So these are the three vesicles, the forebrain vesicle, the midbrain vesicle and the hindbrain vesicle. More specifically called in neuroanatomy or embryology as Rosencephalon, the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon. So you have to remember that the prosencephalon is the part which gives rise to the cerebral hemispheres. So the cerebral hemispheres are formed from the prosencephalon, and the midbrain especially is formed from the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon leads to development especially of the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. So now over here, prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon. Cerebral hemispheres, the two cerebral hemispheres, or the two lobes of the cerebrum, they are formed from the prosencephalon. The midbrain is formed from the mesencephalon, and the cerebellum, the two cerebellar hemispheres, not the cerebral, the two cerebellar hemispheres are formed from the hindbrain or the rhombencephalon. In addition, there is the development of the medulla oblongata which occurs from the rhombencephalon. So you have to remember these important points. Now what happens, there is a neural canal which is formed inside the neural tube and some parts of this neural canal get dilated while as the other parts remain constricted. So as far over here you can see that we have the development of the ventricles. So over here we have the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. So this is about the development of the ventricles. So ventricles are nothing but dilated parts of the central neural canal and the constricted parts form the central canal of the spinal cord. 
No. We had a look at the figure and we saw the specialized group of cells, the neural crust cells. And what is important about the neural crust cells is that they lead to the formation of many structures from diverse parts of the body. The neural crust cells just near the neuroectoderm differentiate into posterior root ganglion, the sensory ganglion of the cranial nerves, the sympathetic chain and the pre ganglion, the parasympathetic ganglion, the Schoen cells and the glial cells. In addition, we have got the arachnoid matter and the pia matter together called as the leptomeninges. We exclude the dura matter over here, the melanocytes in the skin, the adrenal medulla and not the adrenal cortex, the odontoblasts in the teeth, the C cells of the thyroid and the core trunkal septum in the heart and the connective tissue and bones of the face and skull which are formed from the neural crust cells. So you can see that the neural crust cells from this place migrate to many different parts of the body like the adrenal medulla, the thyroid in the form of C cells, the arachnoid and the pia matter and the ganglia at various parts. And what is the relevance of the derivatives of this neural crust? It is a question which is very frequently asked in your MBBS as well as neat PG MCQ types. Now, in addition to that, we have got abnormal, abnormal migration of neural crust cells, which we call as neurocrystopathies. So what are neurocrystopathies? They are abnormalities in the embryological migration of the neural crust cells. And what are the diseases which occur as a result of abnormal migration? They are the Hirschsprung's disease, a well-known pediatric surgery problem in which there is absence of ganglion cells and in addition to that, the multiple endocrine neoplasias, the neurofibromatosis type 1 and the D. George syndrome. We will be leaving a lot we will be reading more about these syndromes in our embryology in specific topics but here you have to remember that these neurocrestopathies are very important as a result of not proper migration of neural crust cells. I hope that these important topics which I have just now enumerated to you. They happen to be very high in topics and you should be remembering all this at the tip of your tongue. They happen to be very high yield and very favorite of the examiners and I wish that this small class of mine would help you in answering your questions in your examinations very nicely. Thanks a lot for your time.